Okay, in this video, we're going to look at interfacing an accelerometer to the Arduino Nano. Now, the accelerometer I'm going to use is the MMA7361, which is made by Freescale. And that's it here on board this little breakout board. Now, I picked this accelerometer because it's easy to interface to a microcontroller. And they're, they're quite inexpensive. You could get them online for about $3 to $6. Now, this accelerometer has three axes of sensing. So, it has an X-axis a y-axis and a z-axis and it's powered by 3.3 volts and it draws about 400 microamps so it's great for battery powered applications now on board this little breakout board there's a 3.3 volt regulator so you could actually power this this board with 5 volts from the nano and the regulator will, will provide 3.3 volts to the accelerometer now there's two detection ranges or sensitivities of this accelerometer there's plus or minus 1.5 G's or plus or minus 6 G's. And that's selectable by one of the pins on the accelerometer. It also has a free fall output pin to detect free fall. So we could have free fall detection, we could have tilt or motion sensing, and you could even use this for a flight controller. Okay, I have my accelerometer breakout board powered up by the Nano, plus 5 volts, and I have the X and Y axis voltage outputs of the accelerometer board fed into channel A0 and A1 of the analog to digital converters on the Arduino Nano. So I'm monitoring the X and Y axis voltage outputs with Arduino Nano and I have four GPIO lines feeding four LEDs which will give us a display on certain threshold values on the X and Y axis. So these two LEDs here will indicate the X axis and these two LEDs will indicate the Y axis. So if I tilt it on the Y axis and I hit a certain threshold on a negative G value right there, the LED will come on. And if I tilt it plus G value, my other LED will come on on the Y axis. Also for the X axis, and plus G on the X axis. And we could do multiple. So for application, so we could have motion detection, we could have tilt detection, and we could have a flight controller. Okay, here's a pinout diagram of the MMA7361 accelerometer. If you look at the very left, you can see pin 6, that's your 3.3 volt power supply input, that's your VDD, and pin 5 would be your ground, your VSS. Now across the power supply pins, you have a 0.1 microfarad capacitor for decoupling. Now if you look at the very top left, pin 10, that's your G select input, that will select your detection range of sensitivity of the accelerometer. Now there's two full scale range sensitivities of the accelerometer, there's plus or minus 1.5 G and there's plus or minus 6 G. Now with plus or minus 1.5 G, your output will be 800 millivolts per, for, per G. And your plus or minus 6 G sensitivity, you'll have a 200 millivolt per G output on your X, Y, and Z axis output voltages. Now if you put a zero input into pin 10, a logical zero, you'll have plus or minus 1.5 G sensitivity in a logical 1 into pin 10. You'll have a plus or minus 6 G sensitivity. Now there's a pull down resistor internally on the accelerometer chip itself. So if you leave this pin unconnected, you'll have 1.5 G uh, sensitivity and that's what I'm using in this video. So the next pin down, pin 13, is your self-test input. Now input here will simulate G-forces on all the axes and you'll get voltages out of your X, Y, and Z axis to indicate that the accelerometer is actually working properly. So if you look at the very bottom left, pin 7 is your sleep input. That will put the accelerometer to sleep for power consumption purposes. So a logical 0 into pin 7 will put it to sleep and a logical 1 will put it into its normal mode. So there's an internal in, uh, pull down resistor on pin 7 so if you leave it unconnected it will be in its sleep mode. So to put it into its normal mode, you have to apply a logical 1 or 3.3 volts to pin 7. So I just connect pin 6 and 7 together, and that will make my accelerometer in its normal mode operational. Now if you look at the very top right, pin 9, that's your 0G detect output. That's your free fall output, free fall detection. So when you drop the accelerometer, it will accelerate towards the ground at 9.8 meters per second squared because of the acceleration due to gravity. And all three of the axes will, will indicate a zero G value. And when the accelerometer detects that, it will indicate a free fall output by putting uh, pin nine high, uh, indicating free fall. Now the pins two, three, and four are your axis output voltages, X, Y, and Z, and they're fed into the ADC converters 
on the Arduino Nano. So we could actually monitor all three of the axes and we actually can see them with the G-force pull on any of the three axes. So normally when there's zero G forces on any of the axes, we'll have half supply voltage on, on the output. So we'll have around 1.6 volts when there's zero G. And as the G goes positive, the voltage will go up. As the G goes negative, the voltage will go down. Okay, next, I want to demonstrate the free fall detection of this accelerometer. So on the breakout board, there's a pin labeled zero G, and that's the free fall detection pin. So that pin will go high when it detects free fall. And that output pin is fed into one of the GPIO inputs of the Arduino Nano. So when the Nano detects that pin going high, it will turn on this LED for three seconds, then turn it off, ready for the next free fall detection. So when you drop the accelerometer, it accelerates towards the ground at 9.8 meters per second squared. And when that happens, all the axes, the X and Y axis values will go to zero G value. Now when that happens, the, the accelerometer will detect that as free fall and I'll put the zero G pin to a high level. So I could shake the board, I could uh, uh, knock the board, uh, nothing will happen, but if I simulate a free fall, the LED comes on, detecting a free fall, because all of the axes went to zero G values dur during that free fall. Okay, here's the code running on the Nano that I used to get familiar with the accelerometer. So the first program we see here is called Gyro. Now that's the code that ran the, the four LEDs when I tilted it in the X and Y axis. So the first thing uh, Gyro does, it goes into a begin and then tell loop and it will read the ADC value and if it's within a certain threshold, like from here it's 180 to 335, that would be my negative G threshold on the X axis, uh, then pin 10 will go high. Now pin 10 would, would uh, drive one of the LEDs. So I have four LEDs that are on pin 10, 11, 12, and 13. So then I'll read ADC again and I'll look for another threshold in the positive G uh, threshold. So if it's between, if the ADC value is between those two values, if it's within those two values, uh, then pin 12 will go high, which would drive one of the LEDs in the x-axis uh, positive threshold. Now I do the same thing for the y-axis. I just select a, A1, that's the ADC channel for the y-axis, and I have my threshold set up uh, for the plus G and minus G thresholds, and that will draw my LEDs. And that will continue on uh, in a loop until any key is pressed on the keyboard, then it will come out of that loop. So that's my simple program, it's called Gyro, to run the four LEDs. Now the next program is the zero G detect, and that's my free fall detect. So I'm monitoring pin seven, GPIO, and that's uh, coming out, out of the, the accelerometer, that's this zero, zero G pin. So if it goes high for 50 milliseconds, I have it set up for 50 milliseconds so there's no false triggering. If it goes high for 50 milliseconds, uh, then it will turn, uh, it will turn pin 8 high for 3 seconds and that will drive the LED and then it will monitor the pin 7 make sure it's low and it will turn pin 8 low that will turn off the LED and I'll, that does that in the begin until loop um, until I hit any key and then that will stop the program so that's a little bit of code it's pretty simple code but it, but it makes it uh, easy for me to get familiar with the accelerometer before I bed it into my project